Hello and welcome to another episode of Risky Business. Uh, today is a particularly uh, special episode. So, uh, as anyone who's been uh, tuning in knows, we've been um, working on uh, adding custom features to Milton right now. But uh, we are going to take a little sidetrack from that because I received in the mail today this package, which if you can see that, says high five one on it. So uh, we're going to open this up and see what's inside. So, um. I'm going to put on my uh, anti-static wristband. Which I have grounded. And um, I took a look at some documentation for High Five One earlier today. And it says you need a uh, micro USB to USB cable. Um, so I found one. I think this is micro USB. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's uh, micro USB. There's also like a mini USB or something. That is a uh, similar but different standard, which is why I'm not sure. But micro USB is the pretty standard one that everyone uses. So I think that's what I have there. If not, I'll need to order a cable. But I think otherwise, uh, everything we need to get started uh, developing uh, with this platform should be in this box, I believe. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. So first of all, in the very top of the box we had some papers. So let's take a look at that. It looks like some kind of decal. I'm guessing you can't see that because it's white on white, but it's uh, the Sci-5 logo or maybe that's the uh, high five one logo I don't know which but some sort of decal want a free t-shirt thank you for buying our high five one dev kit we are thrilled you're supporting our company and our community snap a selfie with you and this board well, I think we're doing a little bit better than a selfie. <laughs> I'm going to tweet them this YouTube video. So it says, uh, snap a selfie with you in this board. Tweet it to the sci 5 Inc. Follow us, and we will send you a sci 5 t-shirt. We are going to do that. I would like a t-shirt. So let's see what this backside of the card says. Thank you for purchasing 
a high five one dev kit. As the in inventor is over Risk Five, it has been a dream of ours to see Risk Five Silicon in the hands of everybody. That's my dream too. I think that's a awesome thing. We can't wait to see what you do with it. Well, personally, I'm not probably not going to be doing anything amazing with it, <laughs> but uh, I'll definitely be playing with it on the stream. That's for sure. Okay, so it tells you the URL to go to for the documentation for the High Five One. I already looked that up on my own once I saw that I got the box. I was like, I wonder if there's documentation because this box, I didn't think there'd be any in it. It's so light and so small. And then they also link the forums. And then this sheet here is just my shipping information, I believe. Yeah. Okay, let's look at what else is in this box. So we have a foam pad here. We're going to take that out and see what's under there. So. I don't know if you can see this, but we've got an anti-static bag there. And I believe there's a board in there. It appears that there is. And then some more packing foam. So I don't have my anti-static uh, mat on the table right now because I have my uh, t drawing tablet on. But I think it'll be fine if we just um, set it on the anti-static bag. Pretty tiny. It's like the uh, size of a credit card. Maybe a little bit smaller actually. Not quite as wide. So uh, I'm going to try to show you up close what we've got here. So um, it's not focused, I can see, but um, we have uh, pins along here, and along here, and right here, this guy right here is the actual risk 5 chip. And so on the side here we have USB and then power. And they have a jumper in the IORF thing. There's um A blue button and a red button. Blue is wake and red is reset. So yeah, this looks uh, pretty interesting. Um, I believe the I believe the GPIO pins or uh, whatever they are, is uh, 
the same layout that Arduino uses because uh, they advertise this as being uh, Arduino compatible. So I think that's what that means. I've never messed with an Arduino myself, so. But uh, I suppose we should uh, take a look at that documentation. Okay, so we want to take a look at um, dev.sci5.com slash go slash i5 one getting started. Oh, I should mention I have wine today since it's a, a exciting special event that the High Five One arrived. I figured we should celebrate with a little bit of wine. So here is our getting started guide. It's a little bit off screen for you guys, isn't it? Uh, here, let's close the GIMP. Let's close one of these terminals. And then let's do a split and resize it. There we go. So here is our getting started guide. So the first release was December 20th, which I believe was the day that they shipped. And uh, the uh, only update to this document has been on December 21st, a day later, with some corrections to software development flow. So table of contents. Okay, so here is the diagram of the Hi5 One, which is, of course, the board we have right here. And so here you can see better some of the things that I was showing, try, well, attempting to show earlier on my webcam. I wonder if we can, is there a way to zoom in? on this thing. I, oh, here we go. Okay. Now you can see this good. So this chip here was the USB to JTAG serial. This is the one that I pointed out right here, which is the actual RISC-V chip. Okay, so there's an RGB LED over here. I didn't, I didn't notice that actually. Oh yeah, okay. I guess I would not have even realized. And then I pointed out the IO reference selector. There's a uh, jumper in there. 
Okay, so we have a low frequency oscillator, a high frequency crystal, 128 um, megabits, or is it megabytes? Uh, the lower case B uh, would mean megabits, wouldn't it? Of SPI flash memory. So just a little bit of flash memory there. Then here's the power jack in case we wanted to power it uh, externally, which I imagine would be useful if you wanted to, like, say, uh, build a little robot uh, robot out of this thing, or maybe, uh, like, use it on a quad quadcopter, make a little drone, you know, things like that. So the micro USB jack is how we actually uh, communicate with it uh, on our computer. So if we want to uh, upload a program to the device, that kind of thing. And uh, of course it provides power as well. Uh, 5 volt indicator LED. LED I should say. Reset button, wake button. All right. So there's also schematics and design files for the High Five One available here. Uh, I don't think we're going to take a look at that, at least not right now. But that's useful to know. Okay, required hardware. So uh, the dev kit, obviously, which is what we received in the mail today. And then uh, USB to uh, micro USB cable, which uh, I believe this is. So uh, I suppose I'll plug it in. Oh, no, I'm wrong. This isn't a micro USB. It's too large. Yeah, that's too large. So this is not the correct cable. So uh, I looked around for cables, and this is the one that I found that I was thinking was micro USB. But uh, apparently it is not. And I don't believe I have a uh, USB to micro USB cable then. So we are going to have to order ourselves one of these and uh, so I suppose we won't be playing with the hardware today sadly since I do not have the appropriate cable but uh, we definitely will be uh, playing with it uh, as soon as I order one of these and it arrives so I'm going to do that uh, after the stream today. It'll probably be a short stream since this is all I have planned for today and I don't have the correct cable. <laughs> but uh, we'll read th through this uh, document today. Uh, I already took a look at it, but for the sake of the stream, we, we will read through it again. So external power supply, uh, the board can be run off the uh, 7 to 12 volt DC power uh, R through USB. So it says it comes with a single jumper, as we saw, which is for selecting the IO reference voltage. And it has a link for if you uh, lose it and need to replace it. I don't think we're going to be taking that out, so um, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, compatible shields. So this part is interesting to me. I think we might want to play around with some shields. That does sound like a, a fun thing to do. So shields are devices which are designed to fit on the IO headers on devices which match the Arduino form factor. And so uh, that was those uh, pins on the sides that I was pointing out. Mm -hmm. 
So um, they've tested a couple of them. A uh, touchscreen and LED display and um, whatever this is. I haven't looked at this, so. But it says, uh, generally shields which communicate with SPI, UART, and digital IO should be easy to use with the Hi5 One. But their supporting library may need minor tweaks to recognize the Hi5 One. Uh, shields with analog input requirements will need an adapter as uh, our chip does not include analog components. So I took a little bit of time and looked into uh, various shields. It looks like there's uh, quite a lot of products of this nature on the market. Um, and so I'm wondering if we can't get a shield that uh, does Wi-Fi going on the high five one and another another thing that would be uh interesting would be um i saw one that does like speech synthesis and stuff some kind of like audio board and i think that would be fun to maybe get it set up so there's a wi-fi board and it then um there's the um audio synthesis board and use those with the high five one and get it to like read out the Twitch chat. <laughs> I think that would be a lot of fun for this stream. So uh, we might do something like that. Anyway, board setup. So installing the IRF jumper, I believe it's already installed. I don't think for just uh, playing with it, like if we do a hello world on this thing, I don't think that needs to be adjusted. So it says it will come with it installed on J1 to select the IO reference level. So depending on the shields you want to drive, so uh, if we do mess around with shields later, we may need to adjust this. It says to select 3.3 volts or 5 volts using the jumper. All right. So connecting to the USB interface, uh, as I said, I have the wrong cable. It, <laughs> yeah, so I cannot uh, connect it right now, sadly. So um, you would uh, just connect it. That's pretty straightforward. So it provides uh, UART console access to the Hi5 One, as well as powers it with five volts. So if we do that, once we have the correct cable, uh, we should see a green power indication from an LED, or from, I guess, two LEDs light up. So then um, once we have the correct cable and plug it in, um, we go on to boot and run. So it comes programmed with a bootloader and a demo software program. Uh, so it prints to the UART and cycles through the RGB LED in a rainbow pattern. Okay, so I think uh, we'll see if that works first of all. And then we're definitely going to do our own uh, little test program probably just a hello world or something like that. So then uh, you respond to the UART and you get a pass me message. Uh, this program will be overridden in the SPI flash. Okay, so the SPI flash is where our uh, program is actually stored. So I believe that's that big chip we were looking at on the diagram. Let me see here. Or not this one, no, this this one. So the 128 megabits is what we're working with for. Um, so that's a bit of a constraint <laughs> on what we can do, but I think we'll be able to do some interesting things with that. So 
So you use the SDK, of course, to flash it. And it won't modify the bootloader. So that's good. So uh, you actually connect to this thing. I've never, like I say, I've never done Arduino or anything like that. But apparently uh, it actually exposes itself as uh, like a special terminal and you connect to it using GNU screen. Or I imagine you could use Tmux as well. So that's really interesting to me. I imagine this is pretty standard, but I've never seen this done before. So this is, I, I just think that's kind of cool that that's how you interface with it. So apparently you pass the speed of the device in and it has some other information here. And this is an example line of how you connect to it with GNU screen. So this is what we're going to be trying. There's also the Arduino SDK, or um, IDE, I guess. I don't know if we're going to be playing with that, but we'll probably be using this method of communicating with the device, I'm thinking. And uh, I looked on Arch Linux and the, uh, so far, I don't see packages for the Hi5 One on um, the AUR, and definitely not on the official repo. <laughs> so we might want to package this for the AUR, uh, unless someone beats me to it. But uh, we'll probably do that. So uh, they have UDEV rules, so you don't need to use sudo. So uh, you just um, copy this into a uh, file for UDEV. And this example is for Ubuntu. Uh, I'm not sure if it would be exactly the same on Arch Linux, uh, but I feel like it is. I can't remember if we're using something like this or not. Like. Um, I feel like we use um, UDEV for some stuff. Yeah, so um, the uh, tablet driver that I have for my drawing tablet is using UDEV, so I'm guessing we can just copy this and uh, use it without modification on our system. Uh, and then you also need to be on the um, plug dev group, your user. So that's the kind of thing that we'd be um, automating in the Arch Linux package. So this is what will show up once we uh, have our device connected. Uh, it has this nice pretty <laughs> uh, logo and then it runs this demo and you say yes to indicate that it's working and it says pass. I don't know what happens if you say no. <laughs> but um, sadly we're going to have to wait until another day because I need to get a uh, proper cable shipped to me. Disappointing but true. So then uh, this chapter is about software development flow. which we'll definitely be taking a closer look at. So there's this Freedom E SDK. So uh, I imagine what we're going to want is to make a Freedom E SDK package on the AUR. And in it, we would do uh, the stuff that we saw up here, as well as um, build this from Git and install it appropriately on the system. So uh, I don't know if they take, I haven't taken a look at this repository yet, so I don't know if they take stable releases or if we, um, because like on Arch Linux packages, uh, for the AUR, you usually have like a stable one and then another one that you have like dash git on the end of the name that uses just uh, the head of master. So uh, I'll have to take a look at that repository and see. 
But yeah, so uh, it has examples of uh, how you uh, build software and uh, upload it. So apparently it provides a make file that uh, does this stuff. And uh, I don't know how it's like with the upload. I'm not sure how that works. Like, does it uh, call out to another program? Or does it, um, like, can you do that in a make file? Like, I don't know how much crazy stuff you can do in a make file. So I'm guessing there's some programs that when you do, when you build the SDK, it probably builds some programs that um, the make file calls is what I'm guessing. But yeah, so you just say like make upload and then pass in the program that you want to upload to the board and you uh, put the name of the board. And then you can also uh, debug with GDB. So that's pretty cool. And then there's also the Arduino IDE that you can use with this too. So I don't know yet if we're going to take a look at that because, I mean, come on, do we really want to use an IDE? <laughs> I feel like we want to use the terminal, but uh, maybe we'll take a look at this. And so they have some screenshots of setting this up too and all that stuff. And then um, there's documentation on the actual chip as well, which I have not taken a look at. Oh, and then there's a pinout diagram. So uh, this is all Greek to me, but um, that'll be useful if we want to do any like hardware projects with this board, which uh, it's going to be tempting. <laughs> okay, what else? So OTP contents. Uh, one-time programmable memory, okay. So, uh, this allows you to boot out of reset. Uh, and it contains trim values for the oscillator. And a unique identifier, apparently. So it has in bold here, uh, the OTP contents are critical to the proper functioning of your chip and the Hi-5-1 board. You are strongly discouraged from modifying the OTP contents. Uh, they cannot be restored if modified. So, okay then. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be messing with that unless something goes horribly wrong. But, uh, I suppose that's good to know. So this uh, gives you offsets in memory, the values, and uh, a description for the OTP. So that's kind of interesting that they provide that here. Uh, I guess for people that do want to ignore their little uh, bold warning here and mess with the OTP, here are the actual uh, contents of the OTP. And then it uh, talks about the boot sequence. So it's shipped with a modifiable bootloader at the beginning of the SPI flash. So at the end of this program's ex execution, the card jumps to the main user portion of the code at this address. Uh, it's designed to allow quick boot, but also a safe reboot. So uh, if a bad program is flashed, um, which is uh, one that makes it impossible to communicate with the board, uh, like if it disables the active clock or it puts it to sleep with no way of waking it up. Um, so it says they can always be restarted using the reset button. And um, I don't know this, I, I, I don't think this is very clear if like that, to me that suggests that um, even if you aren't uh, doing the safe boot, you should be able to just 
press the reset button and you'll be fine. I'm thinking. But uh, the safe bootloader can be halted before uh, the unsafe behavior happens. So I imagine the idea would be like you, I don't know, if the, it's this like it automatically halts if there's some unsafe behavior that it detects? Or like, do you, are you expected to just uh, like start your program with GDB and step through it? I don't quite understand uh, the concept that's being described here. So to activate normal boot mode, press the reset button. Uh, after one second, the green LED will flash for a half second, and then the user program will execute. In the safe boot mode, you press the reset button. Once the LED flashes, you press the reset button again, and then a red LED will blink. The user program will not execute, and the programmer can connect. So yeah, to me that suggests that the idea is you start it up in safe boot mode, and then you connect to it and run GDB, and then start like stepping through. That's the like use case that I see that for. I don't know. I could be totally wrong though. <laughs> So then to exit safe boot mode, you press the reset button a final time. Okay. And then they have some links to um, more information. And then they've got this pretty uh, pinout uh, diagram here. A nice little picture of that. And that is everything in this um, PDF file. So, uh, once more to reiterate, as I said, uh, we have the High Five One here, and we are going to be playing with it on the stream, but I do not have a micro USB cable to connect to this right now. I need to order one. Uh, I had this cable, which I was hoping was micro USB, but uh, apparently not because it doesn't fit. <laughs> So uh, I need to order a cable, so um, I think I'm going to end today's stream here, and um, next stream I'm going to go back to the usual uh, Milton work, but then as soon as the new cable arrives, we will uh, jump into playing around with the uh, High Five One for maybe a stream or two. and we'll probably periodically come back to it uh, as we come up with interesting projects to do with the device. So uh, I know it was a short stream today, but I believe that is everything for now. So uh, thank you everyone who tuned in today. Uh, and thank you, as always, to everyone who watches on the YouTube archive, which is available at risky.tv. Uh, that's just a quick way to get there. It just takes you to YouTube, uh, specifically the Risky channel, of course. And then there's um, at HMN underscore Risky on Twitter, which is a good way to uh, stay in the know about... Um, uh, everything related to the stream. So I post uh, an hour before I stream generally. Uh, I post the schedule at the beginning of the week. Uh, I do like polls and stuff. If there's stuff that I want the community to help me decide, uh, all the YouTube videos go up on there. So, uh, you know, all, all kinds of uh, content related to the uh, series. Uh, so, once again, thank you for watching, and stay risky, everyone.